As I delve deeper into finding my artistic voice, I find myself grappling with the conflict between expressing what my heart wants to express and creating art that would be considered beautiful. When I picture creating art, I often think of crafting gorgeous pieces that people would admire, the kind of artwork that would decorate walls or appear as phone wallpapers. Because that's the point of art, isn't it? The point of sharing all of this is to add a sense of beauty into the world and add value to people's lives. So lately I've been pushing the design elements of my work. I've been finding pieces that I think are aesthetically pleasing as inspiration for what I might try introducing into my own work. I've become adept at finding what elements I enjoy seeing in art and even being able to put them together, but whenever I do, the planned piece feels empty. The ideas I have when I'm not planning this way don't even align with the elements I've found. The ideas I have when I'm not planning are a little more off-putting. Horror has been a significant source of inspiration for me, as has my own spirituality. I'm drawn to images that are foreboding and creepy, and I find that I'm quite moved by them. There are darker and more unsettled aspects within me that want a voice, and it's through those horror elements I feel they're able to speak. But whenever I attempt to embrace these ideas, I'm overwhelmed by feelings of shame or guilt. These unsettled feelings are not pleasant or pleasing. They are not easygoing, they are challenging, and in being so they demand to take up space and the emotional bandwidth of the viewer, and so they start to feel less pretty, and consequently more pointless. It feels like I've been conditioned to avoid being too much, as if beauty itself is achieved by staying small and carefully trimmed. Womanhood, for myself and many others, is the constant pursuit of being pleasant and presentable, unless you have the courage to be undesirable. We're expected to stay in tune with trends, dress fashionably, curate our bodies to meet the standards of perfection and desirability, apply makeup skillfully, be agreeable and polite, and stay in our lane. It's a life of constantly reading the room to discern what other people want from us. It demands that we do not take up space or challenge others. Beauty, in this context, becomes a collection of standards designed to appeal to the masses. Even in my choices of clothing, how I present myself physically, I feel a lingering guilt, as if my value is diminished by being true to myself and expressing my individuality, or I'm betraying the rules I've been given. So many of us have been conditioned to appeal to others in order to be called beautiful, and consequently, valuable. If that's what beauty is, why am I still intrigued by the misfits and the oddballs? Why do I find beauty in abandoned buildings and images of dark forests or of spirits or otherworldly creatures? These things are thoroughly unappealing. They inherently make people uncomfortable. Some of these works actively seek to make you uncomfortable. With women as well, there are moments when you encounter women who defy what is expected of them, and through their defiance become even more charming. I've come to believe that there is a second type of beauty, one that you find in something existing in its most natural state. Often flowers look more captivating in the wild than in a curated bouquet. I believe this is because what's beautiful about these things is the feeling they evoke. Connecting with the raw human experience moves us, and so we perceive that as beauty. It's the way those feelings manifest on the surface that leaves us in awe, not the look of them in isolation. The visual is a means of communicating what's underneath. The distinction between these two forms of beauty lies in their purpose. One aims to serve others and their tastes, the other seeks only to appeal to the maker. When my art takes on a slightly more twisted or messy form, when it communicates something unpleasant or uncomfortable, it no longer seeks to appease someone else's desires. It is not a curation of, this is what others find beautiful, so this is what I should be. The guilt I grapple with is the guilt that comes from doing something I'm told not to do. To do something for myself instead of other people. Is art meant to be beautiful? Absolutely. But choosing to lean into your personal sense of beauty is not going to be something everyone else understands. Not everyone will be able to see the same thing that you see. And so it's terrifying, honestly, to put your heart out there to create your vision, knowing that you're creating something that a large portion of people might label as pointless art. But doing so is an act of choosing yourself over others. Bizarre art might not seek to appeal to everyone, but that doesn't make it any less beautiful. Have the courage to be who you really are, and trust that there is beauty in that. Thank you.